I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work. Because you think that trying something for a little while ought to bring you a big return. But life does not work like Apple. Life does not click and it appears. Some stuff takes time. Greatness takes time. It takes time. You got to be prepared to get a thousand no's to get one yes. The thing you need to win is resilience. You can't just keep trying different stuff, different stuff, because you can never say something didn't work when you didn't have try. Be resilient. Stick it out. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Resilient. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom falls out. Everything is coming up roses, then the bottom falls out. Everything is working out in his favor, and then the bottom falls out. The life starts going your way finally, then the bottom falls out. You plan your retirement, and now you have to take care of your grandchildren. You plan for life to work a certain way, and then the bottom falls out. You're looking for this, and God sends that. You have to be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than other days. And some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. What would you do if you knew you could fail, but understood that that failure could be a real blessing in your life? Now, that's a good question. Because I think we don't reach our possibilities, not because the door isn't open, but because we stop before we get to the door. Every possibility is surrounded by obstacles and challenges. I've never had a possibility with a clear path that I had no opposition to. And just ran up there and knocked on the door and everything opened and everything was good. That only happens in the movies, friends. Resilience. Resilience, the ability to return to the original form after being bent or being compressed. That's the dictionary's definition of resilience. The ability to readily recover from illness or depression. Resilience, being able to withstand setbacks, financial crisis, loss of loved ones, loss of enterprise, and loss of health. How would you ever handle it if you lost everything you had today? What would it take for you to pull yourself up and start all over again? How resilient are you? Could you learn from all your disappointments and start all over again? What would it take? It would take a lot of positive self-talk to muster up the energy to begin again. It would take a lot of concentration to block out the noise and the clutter and the negative voices of others around you. It would also take what? A lot of self-reliance. Your future success has everything to do with you. What's happened has happened. You would need to get on with your life and begin again. It would take a lot of faith and trust in God to move ahead. It would take a lot of self-appreciation, knowing that you have the skills and the talent and the strength to do it one more time. Resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity, no matter how large or how small. Possibilities are always surrounded by challenges. You got to get through the challenges to get to the possibilities, but it's worth it. It's kind of like a Tootsie Roll. You got to get through the hard stuff so you can get to the good soft stuff. That's the way it is with life. That's the way it is with possibilities. What's the use of always keeping thinking of the past? Each must have his tribulation, water with his wine. Life, it ain't no celebration. Trouble, I've had mine, but today is fine. It's today that I'm living, not a month ago, having, losing, taking, giving, as time wills it so. Yesterday, a cloud of sorrow fell across the way. It may rain again tomorrow. It may rain, but say, ain't it fine today? If a cloud of sorrow comes over here, ain't it fine today? Living in the moment, getting everything we can out of where we are in the moment where we are right now. The other thing is willingness to let people and things go. You want to live a life of fulfillment. You've got to be willing to let certain people go in your life. 
When they're no longer good for you, just let them go. Just to hold on tenaciously really doesn't make really good sense, all right? Just many times we do it because we don't realize that we might desire it, but we don't need it. Face the truth about life and deal with it. Whatever happens to you, use everything for your upliftment, learning, and growth. Everything that happens, use it for your upliftment. What can I get from this? How did I end up here? What's the blessing in this for me? Ask yourself that whatever it is, and don't let it go until you get your blessing out of it, because there's a blessing there. There's something for you in everything that happens to you for you to learn from that experience. Look at it, examine it, analyze it, until it reveals itself to you, and then get what you need from that and move on. It takes time to make changes in habit and discipline. Here's the ultimate challenge. You've got to have patience with yourself. It takes time to correct old errors in judgment. I'm telling you, it took me some time. I used to blame the government and blame taxes and blame the company. It took time to give that up and only blame myself. So have patience with yourself, number one. Number two is to keep doing it. Be persistent. As long as you are patient and persistent, it's hard to elude success. As long as you maintain patience and persistence, there's only one person, just one person, that will draw the line between success and failure. And that person is you. So be patient. Be persistent. You need both patience and persistence together. And here's why. Lack of patience is probably the worst enemy of ambition. Impatience wants to give up. Impatience calls discouragement failure. But your ambition won't let you give up so easily. Not if you're persistent. What others may call failure, ambition calls a learning opportunity. Ambition knows that the longer the achievement is in coming, the more valued it is. Oh, please, listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it, to tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. It's unlimited if you're coming back from adversity and devastation. It's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. It doesn't matter how much money you've lost. What you learn from life, not losses, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream, you will start seeing things opening up for you. You'll start attracting people. you start brainstorming. Ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it. The key to it is to begin to focus because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. Put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. All you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. Make sure you do all you can do. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be. Remain alert, even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Keep looking. Be patient. Keep preparing for opportunities, even if there's a delay. 
Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should, keep your disappointments at bay. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Take the little setbacks in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're gonna have to do extra. You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. But here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. He who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up? Because trying again means hurting again, means risking again, means believing again means hoping again. Sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right, they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life. What do you do when something is missing out of your life and the things that replaced it do not compensate for what you lost? I've always been told how average I can be. Always been criticized about being average. But I want to tell you something. I stand here before you, not listening to those words, but telling myself every single day to shoot for the stars, to be the best that I can be. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. And better isn't good enough if it can be best. Other than death, all failure, is psychological other than death all failure is psychological think about that if you aren't dead then it's just psychological it does not mean that you won't lose some battles because you will we all will but it does mean that as long as you don't surrender as long as you don't give up as long as you don't quit then you haven't failed it just means you've made a temporary tactical retreat, a brief withdrawal so that you can regroup and reattack. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated and you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned, you've gained experience and you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. This thing called life, you just don't know what the next moment will bring. But here's what I do know and I want you to know. You have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed and angry. I need to clear my head. This is no time to do something stupid like hurt yourself. No, 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 no. 
So get serious about your goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this. If you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. You got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you. People who don't stop to clear their heads, they react. They don't respond. Be still and know that you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. And you don't want to be radical. You don't want to be erratic. Just be still. And no, I'm going to get through this. You got to assure yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to clear your mind. It doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. Every day, ask yourself that question, how you living? That if you're going to do something, you do it the right way that it's never wrong to do the right thing, that how you do anything is how you do everything. The biggest poison in us is regret. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast, and affects the next 20 years of your life because you made the wrong decision. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? Let the fear of regret fuel you to take action today now most of us who are human have to deal with regret from time to time i'm sure you can agree maybe regret because of a poor decision we made you know things that i wish i had done differently in my life or in my ministry of course who wouldn't want to take another go at something and improve on the first try by doing it again but the fact is you don't get that chance don't let regret beat you down. Don't be a slave to regret. No, let it teach you. Let it make you better. If you ask people what they regret, especially as they get older, what they generally report is things not done. So they don't regret so much mistakes they've made, although, of course, people obviously regret mistakes they've made as well. So they don't exactly regret sins of commission right, errors that they've actively made, they torment themselves for opportunities that had presented themselves that they did not, let's say, exploit or engage in. The regret we feel for things that we've done, though intense, only lasts a short period of time. But the regret that we feel for things that we missed out on, that can extend throughout a lifetime. Because most of us are scared and we choose to lead an easy life. We choose to take the safe path. And by doing so, we start to rack up those regrets. But there is a solution. You have to be willing to be bold. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast, and affects the next 20 years of your life. Cause you made the wrong decision. If you'd have just waited, got all your information together, Settled yourself. You'd have been better. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right. And regret, in and of itself, it's worthless. So, learn and move on. Goals are major to a genuinely success-oriented person. Without them, you're just playing around. The difference between a goal-directed individual and someone without goals is like the difference between a Wimbledon champion and a kid batting a tennis ball around on a court with no net, no opponent to bring out the best in him, and no way of keeping score. Despite everything that's been written about the importance of goal-setting, very few people actually put it into practice. It's always amazed me the way the average guy puts more thought and effort into planning his two-week vacation 
than he devotes to planning his life. What's he taking a vacation from? He hasn't really decided what he's trying to do in life, but for two weeks out of the year, he just decides he wants to do something else. And this is what he plans very carefully. Challenge creates strong character, and goals represent challenge in its most positive form. Leaders have their personal goals clearly in focus, as well as the goals of the organization. In fact, one of the principal responsibilities of leadership is defining goals for the vast majority of people who aren't able to do it for themselves. True desire in the heart, whatever it is you want to do, work hard to get it. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. You become that and give yourself no way. The scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. To absorb, let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. The experiences you have, the good ones, the bad ones, the highs and the lows. Part of the gift you can give to others is the gift of your experience, if you remember. If it's vivid, if it's powerful, if it's fresh, if it's unique, if it's vital. You can really affect other people with the relation of your own, relating your own experience. Just because we're too lazy to live the experience and then reflect on it. Live another week and reflect on it. Take a half a day at the end of the month. Reflecting over the months, what were the numbers? Some weren't good, some were good. The books you read, the books you heard about, relating your experiences at the end of the month. At the end of the year, take a weekend. Take some time reflecting. Over the years, I've developed some ideas about effective goal setting, and I'd like to share those with you in a moment. When I was a kid, I used to dream what it would be like to buy a ticket on a railroad train and just go someplace. I really didn't think about where I'd be going or how long it would take to get there. I just loved the idea of getting on the train and just letting it take me someplace. I guess there's still something appealing about that idea, but it's not really the way you want to live your life as a mature human being. When you grow up, you buy a ticket on a train or a plane because you want to go someplace and you know exactly where you're going. You may have to change planes in a different city. Your flight may be canceled and you may have to switch to another flight. You may not feel like talking to the person seated next to you, but you will persist. You know where you're headed and you're quite determined to get there. That's goal directed behavior in its simplest form. There are short-term goals and long-term goals. Long-term goals are the equivalent of a major journey. When you reach the point where you've achieved your long-term goals, your life will be fundamentally changed, and the process of getting to that point will transform you into a stronger, wiser, higher-performing person than you are now. How can you identify your long-term goals? On a sheet of paper or in a notebook, write these five headings. Number one, what do I want to do? Number two, what do I want to be? Number three, what do I want to see? Number four, what do I want to have? And number five, where do I want to go? Now, under each of these categories, write down several possible long-term goals. Be very relaxed about this. Just allow your mind to flow and come up with three to six ideas for each category. Don't worry about a lot of details at this point and don't spend too much time describing a particular goal. In category number one, for example, what do I want to do? Suppose you want to write a book about the history of your family, going back to the arrival of your great-grandparents in the United States. Just quickly jot down 
family history. Then as you look down the list of categories, it occurs to you that you've always wanted to see the pyramids in Egypt. So you write pyramids. Keep writing down ideas as long as the list of categories continues to inspire you. You'll probably be surprised at some of the things that turn up. You may have kept a great many desires and aspirations hidden in the back of your mind, but the opportunity to write them down will move them to the forefront of your consciousness. That's one of the benefits of this technique. Like attracts like. If you say, I want to be a millionaire, but I don't know anyone that would ever teach me how to do that, or I want to buy a car, but I don't have any money, then what you're doing is saying, it's like calling up Domino's Pizza and saying, send me a pizza, and calling them up a minute later and saying, never mind. It's like, you know, you've got to create the space mentally to hold this vision that you've got. And that requires expectation and then knowing that the perfect thing is on its way. You should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math. You can use your brain to look at the fine print in a contract. But when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. Here are some action exercises that you can do. Make a decision today to invest in yourself and getting better, as if your future depends on it, because it does. Identify the most important skills you have that determine the quality and quantity of results you get at your work and make a plan to get better in each one. Set excellent performance in your work as a goal and then determine exactly what you will need to do every day to join the top 20% or better in your field. Look ahead three to five years and determine the new knowledge and skills you will need in order to lead your field in the future. Then start acquiring them today. If you could wave a magic wand and become absolutely excellent, which one skill would have the greatest impact on your earning ability? Whatever your answer, set that skill as a goal, make a plan, and work on it every day. Commit yourself today to lifelong learning and never let a day go by without getting better in some area. Now comes the really challenging and interesting part. So far, you've just been adding things to the list, but now it's time to start making some selections. Now you're going to start asking yourself what's really important compared to what might just be sort of fun. Choose four goals from each of the four time frames, one year, three year, five year, and 10 year. Now you have 16 separate goals. So far, you've only referred to them in shorthand fashion. But now you're going to start seeing them very, very, very clearly in your mind's eye. You're going to see each goal just as if it were being realized this very minute. And you're going to write down a detailed description of exactly what you see. Do you intend to open a handmade furniture store in three years? What will the store look like from the street out front? Will there be gold leaf lettering on the windows? Or will there be a sign hanging over the door instead? How many square feet will the store contain? Will there be a showroom area for the furniture in front and a workspace in back? Or will the furniture be built at a different location? Do you intend to have any employees or will you run the business entirely by yourself? Think of all the questions that need to be answered in order to see your goal with absolute clarity. Review what you've written at times and keep track of your progress toward these objectives. Above all, persevere. Goal setting is a very important first step, but goal achievement is a continuous, lifelong process. That's what makes it so challenging. That's also why it's so extremely rewarding to finally attain your long-term goals. With regard to immediate goals, those that require anywhere from a day to a year to achieve, I recommend creating lots of objectives that can be accomplished in a month or less. Write them down. Read what you've written at frequent intervals. Keep track of your progress. And do something often 
that brings you closer to realizing these very short-term objectives. That way, you'll always have something to celebrate. These goals are not only important in their own right, they're also confidence builders and motivators toward a lifestyle based on perseverance and achievement. When you're satisfied with your list of long-term goals, read through the list once again. Then, beside each item, write the number of years that you believe it will take you to achieve that particular goal. For example, you may estimate that it will take you 10 years to research and write the book on your family history. But you'll need only five years to get yourself into a position where you can take a trip to the pyramids. Create a time frame like this for every one of your long-term goals. Immediate goals, those that will take less than a year to achieve, are important too, of course, and we'll deal with those separately in a moment. When you're finished entering your time frames, there should be a fairly balanced distribution of all your goals. If there are many one and three year objectives, but only a few in the 10 year category, maybe you need to think more about what you really want your life to add up to. What kind of life you really want to build over the long run. But if there's a preponderance of 10 year goals and relatively few of the shorter term variety, this may be an indication that you're putting things off, that you're focused too much on where you'll be at the end of the day and not enough on what you can accomplish right now. Keep working on your list, adding and subtracting goals with various time frames until you've created a more or less even distribution. Be the best. Lifelong personal development and the commitment to personal excellence requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. It is often the case that we know what we need to do, but we lack the courage to take the risks that accompany trying anything new. Instead, we make excuses for inaction. The great thing about excuses is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. Anybody can have an excuse for absolutely anything, but the downside of excuses is that nobody really believes them. If you make excuses, they're going to know it and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, people are going to know that too, and they'll admire you for it. You need large amounts of self-discipline to deal courageously with all the fear-inducing events of your life. Courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it, all others depend. Often, fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. As you might imagine, I don't think we should spend a lot of time regretting the choices we've made in the past. To spend time brooding over how things went, that's an illusion. What you're doing is suffering pointlessly in the present under the shadow of certain memories. You're telling yourself a story about something that might have been over and over again. How long do you want to do that for? And sometimes life is going to knock you down. But because you have been knocked down, don't mean that you are finished. No, you're knocked down, but not knocked out. No, you got some reasons. It might be your own sense of, of pride and determination and the kind of life that you want to create. So, if everyone is afraid, what is the difference between the brave person and the coward? The brave person disciplines himself to confront, deal with, and act in spite of the fear. In contrast, the coward allows himself to be dominated and controlled by the fear. The difference between the hero and the coward is that the hero sticks in there five minutes longer. No one is born with fears. Fears can therefore be unlearned by practicing self-discipline repeatedly with regard to fear until it goes away. The most common fears that we experience, which often sabotage all hopes for success, are the fears of failure, poverty, and loss of money. These fears cause people to avoid risk of any kind and to reject opportunity when it's presented to them. How many times have you had a great idea, didn't do anything about it, and then a year later someone did something about it, made a lot of money, got the promotion, etc.? So when you have the idea, the inspiration to act, it's time. 
act. And you don't have to know it perfectly. You know, you can drive from here to California, wherever you might be, assuming you're not in Hawaii, by going west. And what happens is that you don't have to see the whole route. You only need to see 200 yards ahead of you. At night, you can drive just with your headlights and the headlights keep moving with you. And your goal in life is to like get in the game. You don't have to see the whole blueprint. You just have to see the next steps, the next steps, the next steps. And if you keep taking the next steps, eventually you get to where you want to go. Does that make sense? We believe that when you are vibrating at the level of 100% expectancy that you're going to get something, it's already a done deal. You know, piece of cake, no, no big deal. We're going to win this thing. We're going to get that contract. You know, I'm going to make this thing happen. Then what happens is the universe literally responds. Sometimes when you're doing this, you're putting on it the vision of this should happen by this date. It's okay to set goals like that, but sometimes it takes a week longer, a year longer, whatever. But law of attraction says if you'll just hold the expectancy 